Hello, my name is Michael Hicks. I am a teacher with 27 years of experience. I'm the founder of Essay Pop, and I'm going to show you how the platform works and how it's going to make your life so much easier. Let's begin with what Essay Pop is. Essay Pop is a cloud based writing platform that teaches kids how to write great essays on any device and in any setting. Now, teachers are going to love Essay Pop because it saves them so much time in terms of lesson creation, instruction, classroom management. An assessment, and kids are going to love Essay Pop because it cures their writer's block, otherwise known as blank page syndrome. There's nothing worse than staring at a blank white sheet of paper, and our method sort of takes away that anxiety and paralysis from the student. So today I'm going to talk about the four essential pillars of Essay Pop. It starts with an intuitive writing frame approach to composing academic papers. And again, this is the thing that's going to cure that writer's block uh, for the kids. I'm going to get into the hive environment. This is the social and interactive heart of the essay pop system. It's where teachers are going to see the student work and it's where students are going to interact. I'm going to talk about a time-saving assessment tool and data collection tool that is going to save 85% on teachers' assessment time. And finally, I'm going to talk about our comprehensive lesson library. It's a place where teachers can go and shop for wonderful lessons. So let's begin with the basic frame writing system. This is where students are going to be writing their essays. And as you can see, the writing area is broken into some color-coded frames. Um, for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll begin with a uh, short response or a power paragraph, which will begin with a um, uh, some sort of opener or, or a hook. Uh, we move to a thesis statement, a topic sentence, also called a claim, some sort of uh, research evidence proof here in green. In purple, we have the interpretation. Uh, this could be known as analysis or explanation, and then some kind of closer at the end. What we're doing here is we're breaking the essay into its constituent elements. This is where the students are going to write. This is the method that's going to be taking away that writer's block. So now let's jump ahead and let's look at an essay that's already been composed. As you can see, they've written all of their elements in the uh, color coded boxes. Um, and one thing I want you to notice is that when the students hit this icon here, this eyeball icon, you'll see that the essay is in fact being converted into an MLA formatted document in real time. And so, you know, the frames are being converted into an essay in the background. Now from this view, um, and this is the view that you will see uh, as, a, as a teacher who's grading and assessing the essay, students can then turn the color off if they want to print the essay. They can export to a PDF or also most popularly export it to a Google Doc. So that makes it very, very convenient for the student. Again, they're writing in the frames. It's being converted to the MLA formatted document in real time. So we feel we've solved the structure problem by providing the student with these templates. And again, we have all kinds of great templates for multiple paragraph essays, narrative responses, quick writes, what have you. And the structure is what is, is really needed. But the second challenge we had was we didn't want to provide them with such a structure that they couldn't um, bring in some flexibility into the writing that we're doing. So I want to show you now how students can easily add to the template. Let's say in the case of this essay, they're doing a uh, analysis of Denise Levertov's Moon Tiger poem, and they want to add another line from the poem. A student would simply go to the menu decide, you know what, yes, I want to add another piece of evidence, and you can see another green evidence box shows up here. So now students can begin adding elements to the essay that they're writing, and moreover, they can begin moving these elements around. Perhaps I want to uh, move this line of uh, evidence here, or perhaps I even want to begin with some analysis and then get into my evidence or proof. So now the students are able to take the frames and not only compose in them, but then begin adding, arranging, and rearranging them so they now have the ability to be as flexible as they want to be in their writing. Another challenge that we needed to solve when we created Essay Pop was the matter of providing students with help or scaffolding that they can access when they're writing. We know that students don't always have the teacher there to help them or a parent, so sometimes they're on their own. So we've created two very powerful pieces of scaffolding help. The first being 
the models and explanations that exist over here in the sidebar. As you can see, they're comprehensive, color-coded in the same colors as the frames, and even explanations about why these things work. So if a student was struggling with a thesis statement, they could go through, get explanations, and get uh, models and examples of what a good th thesis statement looks like. And every element has its own set of models and explanations that students can access. It's like having a tutor or a style guide within the system. Another very powerful scaffolding tool that we've incorporated into Essay Pop into the writing frames are the sentence starters. The sentence starters exist in every box. You'll notice that there's an icon here that when you click it, a window comes down and we have all of these phrases or stems that students can shop through to find the perfect way to start their phrasing for this part of the essay. When they find a phrase that they really like, they simply insert it into the frame. It doesn't write the entire essay for the student, but it gives them that great academic lift that they need. And again, it helps them to write academically. Now, a lot of folks ask us, uh, what if they're not on essay pop? What if they're uh, on an end of the year test or writing on a Google Doc? What we're finding and what our studies are proving is that students are incorporating the frame writing and the sentence stems into their writing even when they're not using essay pop. So we've discussed the writing frame method, the way it breaks the essay down for the students, the way it uses color, the way that it basically alleviates writer's block. But now let's jump to the area where the teacher is going to be monitoring and assessing student work, also the area where students are going to be interacting and collaborating in terms of their writing. Um, we like to say that we make writing a team sport. Let's take a look at the hive. So when a teacher clicks on the beehive icon, it's going to take them to this area where they're going to be seeing all of their classes. This is the hive. When I click on an individual tile, you can see my students will show up. All their avatars are there, their names are there. I can read the hive. Um, for example, if a student has not met the word count minimum, their circle is going to be in orange. If they've exceeded the word minimum, but aren't finished with the essay yet, their avatar is going to be in purple. And if a student has indicated that they're finished, their avatar is going to be in green. And when I click on an individual avatar of a student, their work will come up. And again, it's color coded. It's in that MLA formatted document. And I'm able to go in and leave granular feedback for the student. And what I mean by granular is I can click on the hook and leave feedback. I can click on the thesis and leave feedback anywhere I want to go. You'll also notice that there is a active and robust conversation happening, not just with me and the student, but also with other students that are in the class. We have Beatrice here. We have Melita, the student writer, answering back. We have other students that are in there leaving commentary. It's a live interactive conversation about the writing. We've also incorporated auto commentary into the system. So if I'm on the thesis statement and I want to leave some very quick commentary, I have a lot of students, want to save some time, we have it categorized into things I love about the thesis statement and things that maybe need work. So let's go ahead and leave a comment for this student. I, I like the thesis statement a lot. You've mirrored the prompt well. Your point of view is clear. I'm going to go ahead and post that. I could add, you know, something else as well. Um, it's wonderful to have this auto commentary and every section, every different component has, of course, different auto commentary that you can choose from. All right, so back to the general hive here. I'm looking at my students and now in their current configuration, they all can interact with one another. But what if I want to group these students? Let's put them in pairs, let's just say. I'd go here, I'd select pairs, I'd go ahead and hit OK. And now as you can see, they've all been put into groups of two. If I wanted to uh, select a, a group of four, I could easily do that and put them in, in groups of four. Uh, it randomizes the groups, but I am able to control these groups simply by taking students and moving them around, as you can see here. So I can move students around at will and create those perfect groups that have students of different abilities. Uh, classroom management considerations might come into play, but I can move the students around the way I want them to be so that they're now interacting only with the people that they're clustered with. And this is a huge part of the essay pop philosophy. 
We want conversations happening among students about the writing. We want them not only to become wonderful writers, but we want them to become wonderful mentors to each other. And we encourage this. We show them how to comment on the writing and we cluster them together so they can be collaborative and interaction. And frankly, they have a lot of fun doing it. So the hive is also the place where teachers are going to assess student work. And right now we're looking at a teacher dashboard. This is an essay, wonderful uh, assignment, uh, comparing Shakespeare's Sonnet 130 with My Funny Valentine, the Chet Baker version. This is sort of the teacher assignment dashboard. And you can see this is where I'm assigning my students, uh, the uh, assignment, uh, getting them to the hive. I can modify the prompt and the resources, et cetera. But I wanna bring your attention to the assessment criteria. So we were challenged with alleviating the pain point that all English teachers have, which is the paper load, the grading. So what we incorporated into Essay Pop was a way in which the teacher can filter the elements that they're going to be grading for a particular essay, thereby saving them time. So right here, as you can see, we have an assessment criteria for a multiple paragraph essay. Now, for this particular essay, we're only gonna be looking at evidence, analysis, and reflection. Keep that in mind when we go back to the hive, you're gonna see that these are the only elements that are going to show up to be graded. Huge time saver. I should also point out that you can give students the option of making these same assessments on the same rubrics that you are going to be using. All right, so I hit my hive icon. I'm in the hive, these are all my classes that have done the essay. I'm gonna click on a class, there they are, clicking on students, there's the work as we showed you before, the conversation's happening here. There's that MLA formatted document that's color coded. But now as I click on this assessment button here, remember, I only selected evidence, analysis, and reflection, that part of the conclusion that I wanna grade. Everything else I'm going to be leaving for another day. So ready to assess? Sure I am. So I'm gonna go ahead and click, and you'll notice that the paper scrolls up and the element that I'm going to be grading on this rubric here becomes slightly more prominent, slightly more highlighted. I can look at it, assess it, put down my rubric score, leave some commentary if I need, and then move on to my next section. Aha, the purple comes more prominently highlighted, I leave a score, and I move on to reflection. And what happens is the essay knows where, where I've selected. So it's gonna scroll down and it's gonna highlight that area. I'm gonna leave the rubric score and now I'm gonna move on to my next student. And in this way, I'm able to go through students very, very, very quickly based on only the elements that I have selected. We have found in our studies that this method of assessment is saving teachers between 50 and 85% of their assessment time, which gives them more time to teach. And watch what happens when I go back to the hive. So again, I'm here in the hive and I'm gonna go to the bottom and I wanna view my assessment report. So I just went ahead and did all my rubric scores. I'm gonna click here and you're gonna notice that beneath the avatars, I have all of my data for this essay. I have my averages, my top students, my bottom students, only I see this. I have my average rubric scores. And I can go in and look at the scores. I can even click on individual student work from here. So I'm starting to collect data based on the scores I gave for this essay. And this data starts getting collected with the data from other essays. Watch what happens when I click on the Essay Pop logo. It's going to take me to my home base here with all my assignments. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the assessment tab. And now I'm looking at scores over time. And I can look at all of the essays that I've scored and I start to see scores and averages in different elements of writing that I've done over time. So what happens is after several quick writes, short responses, multiple paragraph essays, narrative writing, a picture begins to form um, of my students work and their growth over time. And I can go in and look at individual essays. I can accordion it down to look at various periods and looking at their data. I can go ahead and look at individual classes. 
and there are my individual students from period one, for example. And what's neat about this is that we have different looks of, of this data. We have the, the student view, which uh, you know they are able to see their own growth. We have the teacher portal, which you're looking at now. But we can even do this on the level of whole schools and whole districts. So you're able to, because you've graded different elements of the essay, you're able to look at that data over time and across groups. And this data can be aggregated, disaggregated, any way you please. Another element of the platform that we're very, very proud of is the lesson library. And this is a place where teachers are going to be able to find all types of content, um, you know, by grade level, by, by, by type of essay, even by the structure that you're looking to do. Um, it's all here. We have hundreds and hundreds of lessons, and these are good lessons. These are lessons that have been designed by national board certified teachers. We have a great staff. And as teachers go through and peruse the lessons, when they click on one, then the detailed lesson comes up. And this includes the prompt, the criteria for success, resources, even a detailed lesson plan, step by step. And, you know, this is a wonderful way to go out and find new material, new stuff that you want to teach. Of course, you can upload your lessons into the system, and those appear in the library as well. But shopping around for new lessons is really a delight. And when you find something that you would like, you simply assign it. And again, this essay is going to be yours now. You can modify it, you can diversify it, and you can assign it to your own students. And when you're done, you can even share it with your colleagues. So it's a great team building thing, the lesson library, um, and we're constantly adding to it. So there's a lot in the essay pop platform that you can explore. I should also mention that the system is completely customizable. Uh, and what I mean by that is that it's open source. You can bring in your own color coding, your own terminology, your own rubrics. It's completely flexible to any school or district's need, even by a teacher by teacher basis. So we have that. And also we're an extraordinarily customer centric company, meaning we we're teachers. We, we built this for teachers. We have a chat system um, in the system. If you're ever stuck, you hit the chat and you're going to be talking to a teacher within minutes. We have a wonderful YouTube channel for support. We have a wonderful help center. So we really pride ourselves on sort of geeking out with our clientele. Um, we love talking about writing. We love talking about um, you know, teaching and, 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 and it's a lot of fun for us. So that's a big part of our philosophy. I think you can see that we're all about having an interactive, structured, and fun experience. And I think it shows in everything that we do. So I hope you enjoy the Essay Pop platform. We know you're going to love it. We know your students are going to love it. Uh, please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.